welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie Podcast. I'm April Atnansky, and I'm here today with... I'm Colin Cunningham. And... Hello, I'm Paul Brown. <laughs> so, uh, Justin is off on assignment this week. He's a uh, big shot in the TIFF uh, film festival world. I think he got a press pass. So, he's off seeing all the movies, and uh, a couple times in the past we've had to bring in a, a ringer. So, today we have friend of the show, Paul Brown... I'm the ringer. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Also a friend. Oh, you're welcome. We do know Paul. We're not just bringing him in like, yeah. you know, we holding auditions. Yeah. He's a top tier patron. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> if you're, no, if you're uh, in the $3 a month uh, group, you get to uh, go into a lottery and then you can you can host the show That's with us. not true. Do not listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just wide-eyed just listening to this going like, oh, I, so much pressure. I can't believe I'm yeah. taking someone's spot. So, Paul, I mean, uh, you work in the industry. You're a director. You that's might, correct? That's one way of putting it. You <laughs> might say that. Yes, I am. Uh, if, you looked on, if you look on LinkedIn, I am listed as a director, yes. Okay, I'll add you on LinkedIn then. Um, I'm, I'm doing a big LinkedIn. I'm doing uh, it now just to confirm that he is who he says he is. Yeah. A different kind of director. I, I, I am a director of kids animated television shows. Let's okay. That. That's very interesting. Got I'm, it. I'm, I'm we, sh- we, I've known you for, for years and years. We've never worked together, but we, we worked at the not. same company, but it's always like, it's like ships passing in the night. Yes. It's, we, we, we do the Lady Hawk thing. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just yeah. barely. Yeah. Paul is like, you <laughs> know, he's, he's just starting the company and then I turn into a hawk and then I fly away. Yes, that's right. Away. As I'm leaving. Um, but you've also been on, uh, you've had some podcasts in the past, right? Or do you have a current podcast? N- no, not really. No, I've, I've done it. <laughs> I get into it, but yeah, I've had I've had a couple podcasts. I had one called The Hot Spot and another one called Animation in Focus. And are they available for podcast listeners? I think one of them might be on SoundCloud. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, check those out. Maybe I'll put a link in the description <laughs> if I can find them. Um, uh, but uh, I, you know what? I might be able to redirect people if they're if they're truly <laughs> if they're truly interested. At the end of this, I might be able to redirect. With the proper link, yeah, you could do your plugs. At the end. <laughs> yeah, we uh, usually plug our stuff at the end. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you picked a movie for us to watch. <laughs> oh, I did. Yes, <laughs> and uh, a pretty popular bad movie, I would say. Um, people know about it. Um, they, they know about it, but not through. Have they seen it? <laughs> have yeah. they watched it, the movie? And I don't think so. I feel like uh, okay. So the movie is Chairman of the Board, starring Carrot Top, the man himself. <laughs> Isn't his real name like? Joe Johnson or something like that. It's no. something very normal. Out of all the research I've done for this movie, <laughs> that's the one thing I didn't bother looking at. His name what? is Scott Thompson. Uh, that's oh, right. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe not John- of kids in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, Joe- not the, that's why he had to go by Carrot Top, I guess, because Scott Thompson was taken. Joe Johnson, I believe, directed <laughs> the- Jumanji. Oh, shit. Okay. And, uh, I was thinking America. Jay Johnson, who was oh, on... Uh, cr- criminal... Uh, <laughs> who was on the movie last week, Master of Disguise. Anyway, Carrot Top. <laughs> the fact that this movie wow. has a higher <laughs> rating on Rotten Tomatoes than Master of Disguise is obscene to me. No. By the way, my first choice was Master of Disguise. Oh. I didn't realize you guys had done it. Then my, second just, was, just it. my second was Clifford, oh, which you guys amazing. also did. Already done. Yeah. I mean, Clifford, great movie. That so would have been poor good. chairman of the board can't even get... It's respect in terms of my choices. Yes. And uh, I should say all of us had never seen this before. I've never seen it. Yeah, I've seen clips of it and stuff, but I've never actually sat down and watched I think it. Most of the world knows it from that amazing Norm MacDonald clip uh, from Conan O'Brien. Perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably one of the greatest scenes or mm-hmm. clips ever filmed on a, on a late night talk show ever. And if someone goes on YouTube, and types in Norm MacDonald, Conan, Carrot Top. It's only seven minutes long. Yeah. That's all you really need to see. <laughs> that in itself is more entertainment value than all of Chairman of the Board. All right. Well, now's the time where I usually say, hey, I liked the movie. Um, I, didn't, I didn't like the movie, but I'm going to say this. I would have, this would be a movie that I liked if you took Carrot Top out. If he wasn't in it, 
I think I'd be okay because everyone else is kind of kind of unbor- I mean, Courtney Thorne Smith is really not She's acting very it. much, but everyone else is uh, is okay. okay. I mean, Larry so Miller. Are you saying like take his character? Yeah, out? like I don't want to see him or look at him. Um, so I know it wouldn't, it wouldn't just, be much just of a swap movie. him out for a different actor. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, hold on. Here's how bad it was. <laughs> it made me wish that Polly Shore had starred in it. Oh, yeah. I, I could actually... I mean, that would still be annoying. I Don't did, get me wrong. No, but, actually, uh, that may have been better, yeah. That could have been like an early version of the script. Like, we've got Polly Shore attached. Wait a minute, this Carrot Top guy, he's into prop comics. Yeah. <laughs> he's a prop I, comic, sorry. I, I was like... Uh, like The only thing I know about Carrot Top is that, yeah, the props and probably from the uh, Mr. Show's Blueberry head <laughs> with David Cross. I don't even remember that. Blueberry it was head. a blueberry head. <laughs> and he had like a toilet seat with like a rear view mirror on it. And he's like, this is so y'all can pass gas. Oh, that's right. Okay, so you yeah. guys were alive in the 90s. Um, so, yeah, Carrot Top must have been popular. I, was, I, I was married in the 90s. <laughs> what did, I was alive. I was just very young. <laughs> did, did did he have like a popular like show or an act like like he's, he had to be popular enough to get this this movie made which is I'm sure cost at least th- a million dollars I think it was just the act wasn't it like it was the act but you know what Polly Shore is <laughs> more he is more popular now than he has ever been in his enti- in mm. his entire career he has his own like residency in Las Vegas that's you said true huge. you that's said Polly Shore. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Wait. You mean Carrot, Carrot Top. Top. Wait, okay. Polly Shore doesn't have residency? He should. Because I think, he he does, might, yeah, I, he I think there might be a Polly Shore comedy club somewhere. You should have the residency in the biodome. <laughs> I'll make some phone No, calls. you're right. We went to Vegas and we did see the posters for Carrot Top. Yeah. Carrot Top. It's, yeah, it's oh, yeah, insane. Yeah. It's huge. Uh, he's crazy successful. See, now I'm, I should just look up like his stand-up you know, on YouTube because like, (laughs) what is it? You can, does he bring all these props out and and say things like he does in this movie? (laughs) Yes. Well, he took what, (laughs) what's his name? Gallagher. No, no, what's the other guy with the curly hair who's now bald? (laughs) But it was Gallagher. Stephen Wright? Uh, (laughs) What's his name? (laughs) What does he do? Like a prop? Does he do props? Yeah, who's serious? The guy who had the handbag. (laughs) What? No, I don't and it was know. a it was a bag that's a hand. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. No. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. He Cut was this down. he was a prop he, comic. He took what Howie Mandel started <laughs> and made it way worse. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, because Howie Mandel, now he's a huge star he's, now. He's yeah, on yeah, he's America's a, Got Talent and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Carrot Top in this movie is so annoying, and like none of his bits are funny. He's he's appalling. Everything about him is appalling in this movie. Uh, this is one of those things. Like I was telling you guys earlier, that I usually watch the movies twice. We said it before. April and I usually watch the movies the night before. You know, with dinner and, and stuff drinks. like that. I need, I need to. Drinks. I need to write notes, you know, to sort of keep keep the scenes in, in the correct order. So I watch mm. the movies the next morning. This was probably the hardest. Although I will say, I didn't have a drink when we watched this because we were hungover no, from the night before. I. <laughs> <laughs> so I was hungover watching this. Yeah, now this that's a, a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Yeah, Good lord! To, to watch this it, again today. It was at the halfway point of this movie, and I know exactly what point it is because it was the one where he met the security guard that had the chia pet hair <laughs> yeah the I ladies to, love him i had to put the movie on pause by the way i rented it for 3.99 from oh, oh man we watched it for <laughs> so free. i was already angry at myself <laughs> so i i paused it and then i went into my kitchen i had two advil and then i took 10 minutes to pet my dog mm. took a deep breath and then I continued watching it was tough yeah it was tough to get through it's like an hour 40 Oh yeah, and it it feels very, very, very long. Well, the plot gets to a certain point where it's like, um, okay, like the movie's gonna. Eh, he's just finding all this success, and then it's like thirty minutes are left when we have to shoehorn in, shoehorn in this like conflict about, you know, radioactive TV dinners. Yeah. But it just it feels like the movie was over, and then they just, like add this like extra conflict at a weird like spot in the movie. And it even, definitely had pacing issues. Yeah. yeah. Even like Courtney Thorne Smith, I mean, she she was on the Conan O'Brien show yeah. uh, that night and uh, I felt really bad for her, but I don't know. I think Norm <laughs> Oh, 
don't feel bad for her. Because <laughs> yeah, if you look it up, she's quite happy with the fact that Norm MacDonald made so much fun of the movie because she hated it. You could tell in the movie she resents it. She also has to make out with Carrot Top a couple times. Yeah. And she also has to burp the alphabet, which is uh, embarrassing. It's so, it, But she's like barely in this. Like she no. sort of yeah. shows up. It seems from, like an afterthought. Yeah. Um, um, I looked it up and the scene where she kisses Carrot Top. Yeah. Requested by Carrot Top. Of course, you don't say. A couple other scenes he requested specifically. <laughs> we There's, can get to oh, that. Oh, scenes the- where he's like banging ladies? Because that's in the movie a couple times where women are just he's taking their the clothes man. off yeah. in yeah. front of. I mean, there's two incidents. He is a yeah. condom. Uh, what is it? A condom, condom, condom tester, tester or something. Tester or something and he's having sex. And he gets caught by the boss's... Uh, he's or it's the, fucking her, his daughter. Yeah, he's banging the boss's daughter. It's like, who would have sex with this man? I'm not saying he's the least, un- the most unattractive man ever. It's, it's the personality. <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I, I, the main thesis of this movie is Carrot Top never stops yelling. He, he, he can't talk without... Talking like this Every, the entire yeah. movie. It's like right from the get go, I think. And I'm just looking at my notes here, and it's just I have multiple times showering, screaming, screaming. <laughs> He's still screaming. Especially in the show. Always <laughs> screaming. <laughs> like, screaming, I, screaming, yeah. always screaming. This I is... have my, my third note is why are there so many handheld wide angle lens shots? Yes. yes. And, and Dutch angles. And, Dutch and angles. POV shots. POV shots. Oh, God. What year was this movie? 1990. 1997. Yeah. You said 1990, Colin. No, I think it was 1997 <laughs> or No, eight. it feels la- later 90s, but it has this like, I mean, did you guys ever see like that Cool as Ice movie with Vanilla Ice? It feels oh, like that. that. I haven't actually seen haven't it all seen the way it. through, but it's it's like a constantly it. like this like fast motion, like like fisheye lens, uh, you know, I've had too much sugar f- 90s yeah, feeling. It's like an energy you can kind of like, uh, like right from the get go, like, uh, you know, when he's waking up in the morning, it feels like Pee Wee's Playhouse or yep, something like yep. that. But it's like that kind of energy and obnoxiousness you can't sustain for an hour and a half. Yes. It's small doses. I, I feel like a lot of people probably saw this as a kid and thought, oh yeah, it's a funny, goofy movie, but would be probably appalled if they watched it today. I mean, I'm pretty sure, I'm not saying, hey, maybe there are people that have nostalgia for this, but uh, I, I just never saw movie. it. Um, I'm gonna go no, I'm, well, gonna, I'm telling you, people are going to comment and be like, I watched this all the time as a kid. I'm yeah. not saying it's good, but I liked it at the time, you know? Well, well here's the thing. I mean, I... There's obviously, I mean, the movie starts with a big Rube Goldberg thing of him waking up, which yeah. is Pee Wee's Playhouse. That's yeah, exactly it's been done how so Pee-wee's many Playhouse times. Starts or Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but Pee Wee's Big Adventure, they did it, and then they kind of like ease you into the story, and they're not doing it the whole time. This whole <laughs> thing is a Rube Goldberg contraption from the beginning to the end. Everything is a <laughs> Rube Goldberg. everything is screaming. <laughs> everything is on fire or foaming. It's yeah, just, or it's spraying things. <laughs> like his fucking car and... You know, uh, so he's and his name is Edison, and uh, he's an inventor, a wannabe inventor. Uh, oh, uh, so he he's right from the from the beginning. We, yeah, uh, I made a note on that. We're, so we're, he's born <laughs> under the oh, name Edison, God. and so his mother already knows that he's an inventor. Also, he's in the womb, like with test tubes. He's got and like stuff. a science lab with test tubes inside yeah. his mother's womb. So she uh, named him Edison, knowing that he was. <laughs> He would be an That's inventor. what I'm getting at. <laughs> and by the way, the in the womb stuff reminded me a lot of Superman. Where Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, yeah. Superman. When he's when raising that baby, thing. When the baby is uh, going to yes, Earth yes, and son. Superman is kind of rolling around in this that was probably jewel reference. encrusted spacecraft. That's what the in utero my, scenes were. My like. boy, yeah. you'll be an inventor. Where they're like learning, he, the, teach, the baby's being taught about Earth, <laughs> I think. But this baby's got this horrible carrot top wig on. And it's, yeah. it's drooling. And we, we start with the, hey, that's me. You're probably wondering, blah, blah, blah. I'm an inventor. I've always wanted to be an inventor. And now, the thing also about Edison... How big is his mother's womb? Oh, I... You know. Well, considering the the child is probably eight months old. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) 
a real like a she's a little late. almost a full year old baby. And this set looks dis <laughs> looks so disgusting. What the hospital or the womb? No, the womb set. It's like oh god. It's just also, creepy. speaking of Rube Goldberg machines, we get an animated title sequence. Yeah, which was very of the time. Although at ninety seven, they were kind of being phased out by that point, right? Animated titles. Yeah. That was more of like an eighties, even like a seventies, like sixties, like comedy thing that they. Used As to memory do. serves, I was I would have been into. It. I didn't see it until. Two days ago, mm. but I would have been okay with it. Uh, I don't yeah. think it's inspiring anyone to get into animation. No, um, I mean it was. I usually don't like those, but if it's done well, you know, like I don't know, like Grease or something like that, it can be like a fun, like different thing to see before the movie. Sure, about to see. but I think there was at one point there's some other animated stuff in this movie. Yep, you there? go into his head. Through yeah. his ear hole. Yeah. And, and then, that was like stop motion. I think I turned to you and I was like, well, this is kind of cool. And then you would you were just hating the movie so much <laughs> at that point. You were like, I was like oh, yeah. God. This I feel sucks. like they had a budget for the animation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And somehow it got squandered. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they didn't quite make it what was uh, what was. Carrot Top's artistic vision, probably. I felt yeah. like this whole movie was like a, like an MTV like interstitial, you know. Yes. And we didn't even have MTV in Canada, but you know, it's is that kind of vibe stretched out to like an hour and a half, which yeah, which you can't. Oh God, it's just so obnoxious. Uh, so he's born. He like uh, he creates some potion. He's blasted out of his mother's vagina through a wall. Mm-hmm. So you get the Looney Tunes, like, like shape, shape through the wall, and you're like, ha, ha, ha. That's the type of movie you're in, in for, folks. It's a boy, but it's like, it's like who is this movie for? Like, what age group? I, you know, I it's, think, it's, like, younger kids, but there's, like, sex jokes in it. It's so. geared towards yes. very young children, but... Well, not that young. Again, well, he's... Other than the sex jokes, but, I mean, mm, the yeah. humor is, like, just, like... Eight-year-olds would probably like it or something. I don't know. I'm it's guessing ten-year-olds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind we're talking about Carrot Top. Here, yeah, though. I know. Yes. I know. <laughs> um, okay. So the other thing about Edison, did I mention he's a surfer? And I just got that uh, when we watched it. Chairman of the board, <laughs> surfboard. I I only <laughs> realized it about four fifths of the way through the movie, <laughs> and I stopped it to look it up to see if I was correct and yeah. found out that that was the entire pitch for the movie yeah. is that the guys who wrote it or the guys who came up with it saw an ad, a beer ad, saying chairman of the, and then a surfboard, and they're like, hey, that's a good idea for a movie, and they pitched it, and it got greenlit. <laughs> they didn't even realize it was for a beer it was for it was a beer. But was ad. was Carrot Top involved at that point, or it was just no. like, hey, chairman of the board movie? See, I can totally believe like Polly Shore being in because he kind of totally. has that surfer persona. It doesn't have to be Carrot Top. It could, no. but, but but Carrot Edison he brings in all this Hawaiian luau stuff into the uh. company, and it's all very surfing. But it, 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 what is he? Is he a Pee Wee's you know a, a inventor guy, or is he a surfer guy? He's both. He's both. It's because confusing. Although the surfer part really does feel like an afterthought yeah oh yeah especially <laughs> the like... scenes of him surfing where he's like whoa that might be my favorite part of the movie <laughs> where where he's like just on a like a backdrop like it, it clearly like not shot in a parking yeah, lot exactly. from below cut to the world's worst stunt double surfing so, i have i have not <laughs> seen surfing filmed that bad since Escape from L.A. <laughs> oh, you bite your tongue. Terrible. I think, you that was, tongue. I think that was worse than this. Uh, but we have a, a, an affinity of that for that. But yeah, that was pretty bad. Okay, so his, his house is like a fucking living nightmare. This is like on Venice Beach. He has like a shark, uh, I guess like for the mailbox. It's like a shark head that eats the mail and spits it out. Yes. Again, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. They've done yeah. it. Yeah. I know, but it's like a <laughs> disgusting version of that. It's yes. it's the uh, you know, Estelle Getty we see is Estelle So Getty. Estelle uh, it's it, 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 no, I think that's the lady from Golden Girls. It's yeah, Estelle Yeah, that's something. what I kept saying. I oh. I wrote Estelle Getty I'm like just, five times. Oh, really? <laughs> going to look Estelle it up. Harris is her name. Estelle <laughs> Harris. Okay, so Estelle Harris from Seinfeld is a gem. She's funny and she's funny in this and also this movie might have the record for most Seinfeld guest stars in a movie. I have that as well. Yeah, yes. I counted 10. Really? That's well, a lot, yes. right? 
There might be more, but uh, yeah, 10. Yep. There was cross-pollinization of so many Seinfeld people in <laughs> yeah. this movie, except for the main Seinfeld cast. Yeah. Just like the tertiary. Oh, yeah. So many. Taylor <laughs> Negron. Including the main bad I mean, guy. definitely Estelle Harris is the biggest, like, uh, Oh, yeah. Seinfeld role. Larry Miller? Well, Larry Miller was only, I'm just saying, like, Estelle Harris was in the most Seinfeld episodes sure, of everyone. Yeah. Everyone else, I think, was just in one episode. But, but, but every yeah. other character in this movie is somebody that like, yeah. you recognize. Yes. Like, and that's shit. why I was saying the rest of the movie is would be good if we didn't have to deal with all this carrot top shenanigans because it has a strong supporting cast. It does. And other uh, than Courtney Thorne Smith. Well, I gotta say, it's not her fault. It's she's not just, her fault, but she's like, not she's not good, though. She's uh, not acting well. Sorry. She's fine. Oh, how do you? How can you be good <laughs> if someone if someone yeah. tells you one day, okay, today's the scene where you kiss carrot. Yeah, and also <laughs> she's supposed to act annoyed by him, so like she yeah. is, <laughs> you know. So she's doing that well. Yeah, she doesn't become the love interest till I think after the hour mark. Yeah, and then well, you're like, why did she love? Let's him? track it down. <laughs> so she hates him. She despises yeah. him. Yes, she thinks he's a joke until. Aloha, no, uh, <laughs> Luau, Wednesday. Luau Wednesday. Luau Wednesdays. They have Luau Wednesdays, and Carrot Top demands that everyone on the board and in the factory, they all go to the beach and they all Hang have out. a Luau. He's got like a band and everything. And like she a, a... looks across and sees <laughs> him doing some Luau stuff. And that's it for her. And... He's on stage. She her pa- her, her panties she are soaked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we talk? Um, okay, I think we're, we're kind of jumping the gun. Jo- but, yeah. You know, we, we, okay. have to, we have to backtrack. We, we need to at least get to the old man who dies <laughs> while yes, surfing. Certainly. No, he does, he's not dying How while surfing, you. surprisingly enough. But okay. yeah, anyway, Estelle so, Harris so the is the landlady. She's the landlady. She's yeah. going to kick them out of the house because they haven't paid rent. This house is so... It, it, He's covered in all of his stupid inventions. At one point, she's like, she opens up the uh, fridge and like a, a dead cat like falls out. That's not a joke. I don't know what that is. <laughs> like, is it still alive? So, so it's real? <laughs> what yeah. Hell? It just, you just hear like, and it just falls on, but it's like got, you know, like icicles It's frozen hanging. solid. I'm and then just... the inside of the fridge is just covered in mold all over the, it's uh, just disgusting. I don't mind his two surfer friends. Um, the one guy, Seinfeld actor, and then the other guy with the bad dreadlock wig, which we, we. Zach and I forget the name of the other guy. I, it's like Lev or something like that. But anyway. His, uh, his wig is so like, bad. They're like, yo, bro. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm okay with them. You can well, see his forehead like moving <laughs> behind the the wig stays still, and you can see this yeah. head well, I, moving I, behind the hairline. I feel like someone who is connected with this movie, a producer, said, "Hey, you know what? Bill and Ted's excellent adventure did yes. really weird. You need to do something like that." Mm-hmm. And then someone else said, uh, "You're eight years too late." Yeah, <laughs> and they said, "I've made the decision." <laughs> <laughs> What, are you going to question me? <laughs> put, put them in. Put them in the movie. <laughs> uh, okay, so Carrot Top has to get a job because they have to pay rent. They have to pay and rent. We talked Estelle about this. Harris, yeah, so he's pitching uh, his stupid thing, his stupid inventions to Taylor Negron from yeah, Seinfeld again. Yeah, from Seinfeld. Now, he was in Curb. Fast Curved, Times High. And also... Nothing uh, but trouble. Say, nothing, nothing but trouble, yeah. Uh, he's passed away, unfortunately. Um, yes. But he's a very funny actor. And he says what we're all thinking, your inventions suck. Yes. Like, everything he comes up with in this is movie it fucking sucks. Like Yeah, like, literally all of them. Uh, well, Glow Goo, I guess. Glow Gunk. Um, <laughs> I guess I could see a practical use for that. I'd go to a rave, you know. Well, with <laughs> it's just glow in the dark pain. Yeah, well, it already with, exists. With Taylor, what's his name? Taylor Negron. Taylor, ne- Taylor Negron. Taylor Negron. Taylor Negron, who's as we've established, is very good. Yes. Yes. They have when they as soon as they introduce him. Of course, you know he's he he's going to be a part of Carrot Top's shenanigans, and somehow. <laughs> He released, Carrot Top releases a room full of bees. <laughs> killer and, bees. Yeah. Killer bees, sorry. Killer bees. And Taylor Negron is waving his arms madly at, while screaming at <laughs> Carrot Top. And if you look really closely, you can see 
Taylor Negron's soul leaving his body and <laughs> yeah. questioning his life choices because he's thinking to himself, what have I done with my life? No. This is terrible. He's, he's, he's running back to his like, trailer. He's like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not coming. I'm done with this he's movie. You made enough some... money? Eh, no, whatever. he probably made like 500 bucks for that it's for the like, day. He's shooing away CGI yeah, bees. but it's like the residuals. Horrible CGI bees. The residuals. You know what? I thought they looked okay for, <laughs> for 97. I said she they looked. Actually, I said they said. looked better than the CGI in Blade, which we also just watched. <laughs> uh, I'd have to go back and retrace, you know, folks. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like, uh, you know, there's not a lot of CG in this movie. I'm sure there's a lot of like stuff that you don't necessarily like notice. But as far as like, okay, that's a CGI model. I think that was pretty, pretty much it. The killer bees it's better than this movie deserved. I think is this is this before particle systems? <laughs> I don't. Well, it's like ninety seven. No, I don't think so. I was like related to Jurassic Park. I'm like ninety three. Okay, four years, five years after Jurassic Park. Some of the stuff in that Blade movie. Oof. Now this is my first note here, where uh, I said always screaming, and yes. he's screaming through this entire scene. There's not uh, a lot of salty going on with Carrot Top. No. Entire movie. And, yeah, so this we get a job montage. He has to like... Yes, job montage. Uh, boy. I don't remember any of them other than the condom I one. I got them written down. Okay. So the second <laughs> one is the condom. So he's got a cr- crash test. So, condom. Oh, <laughs> crash <crack> inspection. <laughs> That's what I wrote. Hey, wait, wait, so hold on. The French he's tickler a la- is great. Oh, God. Down. So wait, hold on. He's a ladies' man? Yes, yes. apparently. Who asked for this scene? <laughs> Let me guess. Top. I bet Care. it was Care Care top. Top. <laughs> Well, they establish that he has fake arms in his bed to fondle him, and yet he can just go to the condom place and fuck the boss's daughter. So, <laughs> After, um, you know. does not make sense. Does not compute. Uh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> what I mean, <laughs> sure. But then later on in the movie, like uh, I think Courtney Thorne Smith is asking, like, have you ever been had an, a girlfriend or something? And he's like, no. Okay, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All I right. So that. again, he's contradicting himself. Whatever. I mean, French ticklers. Okay, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to go. I'm going to go to the third, uh, the third job. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was the. He's auditioning for Annie. Oh, right. <laughs> Which now, I was kind of funny. Before it's we right. even get into it's that, right. I want to say, you know, back to shaky cams and Dutch angles and wide angle lenses. Yeah. The shot where it shows the marquee for Annie auditions is the most shakiest shot in the whole movie. That's it's so just weird. a shot of a marquee and the camera is moving all over the place. And on the stairs, there's a guy standing on the stairs, just a random extra standing on the stairs underneath the marquee. And I watched it going, I bet that's the director. I don't know why, but I feel like the director really wanted to be in a lot of these shots where you see a singular uh, person. extra for no reason. Yeah, it's cluttering Paul, a shot. Paul Greengrass had to come and take over directing <laughs> while he was what a, there. What a shot, though, of a sign that you need to read. Like if it's doing that, although there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of like the camera is not only Dutch, but it'll like go like like on the floor and then like pu- push up like under like Larry Miller walking or something and yeah, like moving oh, yes. and curling around his face. I know face. what shot you're talking about. And I'm like, ah! Like, yeah, and then, you know, at. Carrot Top will kind of smack into a wall but it'll just be like plexiglass that he'll smack into. Yeah. And it's just sort of a lot of that kind Stuff of weird, like that. So the Annie audition, so he's, <laughs> that's the joke is he has red hair and he's there <laughs> right. with a bunch of little girls Yeah. and he says something and all the girls start beating him up. And he gets all beat up. And then, sure enough, it's his turn to walk out on stage in front of the casting people. And he's going to sing an Annie song. And he's about to sing a song similar, maybe, to The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they stop him short. And I realize, oh, they couldn't afford the song. (laughs) Oh, shit, you're right. Because I was going to say, I thought that him looking beat up would be like, sir, you're hired. Because she's supposed to look like a dirty, like, orphan. (laughs) Is that no? I, I guess I was not thinking I correctly. Know you talking. know, I thought you were gonna say a dirty whore. Because <laughs> like, he's all like, like got like dirt on his face, and his clothes are ripped. Like is that she, how she, Annie's I've remember? never seen Annie. Well, I don't think. So. I don't think. It, I don't think the, at the she was being beaten up in the I'm, orphanage. I'm thinking of uh, Oliver Twist, I guess. Oh, um, another yeah, another orphan. orphan movie. 
uh, or orphan, like, pla- orphan <laughs> plant. Like, and he's like beaten up and dirty. <laughs> you must have seen an Annie that I, I never uh, saw. Weird. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so we need to meet. Uh, what, what's the name of Jack the. Jack Warden. Warden. Uh, no, but the character's name. Oh, I don't know. Oh, who knows? <laughs> we all forget. Uh, we, can matter. we just call him Jack Warden? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's dead. And like, <laughs> this is like the second movie. Uh, uh, you gave me some options for movies. Uh, uh-huh. Two of them had Jack Warden. What was the other one? I don't know. <laughs> Clifford? Yes! Was yes, was it Clifford? Clifford? I haven't seen Clifford. <laughs> now, Jack well, you gotta. <laughs> so, Carrot Top is driving in his just fucking obnoxious car. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, all his gizmos. Comes across Jack Warden, whose car is broken down. Jack Warden is dressed like Hudson Hawk in this scene. He's got little for, blue for tinted sunglasses. Reason. He's really cool for some reason. He's got like He's an a earring. cool 80 year old. He's got his like hat with like the brims like kind of rolled up and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, yeah, for, for whatever reason. And uh, so, I don't know, Caratop fixes his car, uh, shows him, like, the inside of his car, and he's like, oh, you're Gets taking... his mouth filled with chocolate syrup somehow. <laughs> yeah, that was clearly chocolate syrup. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, he fixes his car, and then he loves him, and then he gives him a carrot smoothie blended in like a little mini blender and that Jack, comes out of his glove compartment yeah and Jack yeah. Warden's like well that's ingenious and it's like it's just a blender yeah it's just the a fact small that it's blender. in a car uh is a thing I guess you could just attach a blender to a car and then it's what not... do they do next they go surfing yeah uh, like, well, well quote unquote <laughs> Again, the the, the, fo- the bad footage of Jack Warden like up against the sky, like going "Whoa, hang yeah. ten, bro!" They like how they would have shot it in 1966, Batman. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm calling it my favorite thing are those surfing scenes because there's okay. lots of other things I could say, but I'm going with the surfing there's scenes. There's like two of them. They're, surfing they're, scenes. It looks like from the from the wide shots. I wasn't sure who was supposed to be who because the stunt doubles don't look anything like Jack Warden. It looks like. Some no, young of guy course not. Well, what, it, it is why a young couldn't guy. they just get Jack Warden? <laughs> looks, Teach him how to surf. Yeah. Looks like some twenty year old surfer wearing like a like a Colonel Sanders mask or something. Like that. You're not with wrong. Full, dude. The full head of hair, was. and then they come back to Jack Warden in a parking lot <laughs> with his like surfboard being shaken by a bunch of grips. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hang ten. Again, so they, it yeah. just, it's a scene that seems like it was written by a group of. 45-year-old men who had never surfed in their lives. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then in the one scene where Carrot Top is not yelling, they have a heartfelt conversation on the beach where he just talks about, oh, his dreams, and he wants to be an inventor. He shows him his, his book, little, like, idea and book. he loves it. And then cut to, I guess, the next day, and, and he's dead? It what? couldn't have been the next yeah. day because he's made a, a yeah. video will. Yes. <laughs> that video will was funny because it was like, you know, like funeral entertainment's video well and it's on like a green screen and then the bed flies away at the end yeah. that, was kind, wings, that was kind that was kind of funny he would have had to have gone home that night yep, i <laughs> like, think he did he's like i know my time's coming up loved carrot top so much yeah uh and made that that video he probably would just have time to shoot that video before he died yeah, yeah uh, i think he just knew um sometimes you just sense it uh and uh he had such a good day surfing so he was like i'm i'm done by the way, that day ended with Carrot Top and Jack Warden sitting on a beach and the sun is setting and Jack Warden has his hand and he's patting Carrot Top on the shoulder and he says, son, <laughs> you remind me of you. You, you, <laughs> me. <laughs> you remind me. <laughs> he didn't flub the line, but and son, you reminded me of me of when me. I was your age. That's right. And right off the bat, I'm thinking... Oh, I bet something's going to happen here, I bet. What, like they're going to make out or? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that right would have been, next scene. That yeah. been pretty good. Um, okay, so I, he I do fucking love that he's, dies. I do love that he's showing him his like idea book or whatever. And it has, it's like a pop-up like, yes. book. And he says, wow, these are great. You've got a good head on your shoulders. And it's like, if you looked at that book, you'd think it's the if, ravings of a lunatic. Or a child, like child literally child scribbling. <laughs> it's like, you got a good head on your shoulders. Okay. This is fantastic. So we need to get to Carrot Top being made chairman of the board. We're introduced to everybody at this funeral. Rance, yes. Was it Rance Howard? Rance Howard uh, is the 
priest. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Ron Howard's father mm-hmm. is the, what would you go, the officiator? What would yeah. You yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's a priest. <laughs> I think that's for a wedding. <laughs> and uh, Larry Miller, who is really the star of this movie. He's kind of like the MVP. He's fucking hilarious. And he's doing the best he can with this situation. But he has a lot of actual funny scenes that really, that had us laughing. We laughed, people. He's always this character in every movie. <laughs> He's yes. often, uh, often this character. Uh, I actually did a little research and found out that uh, while they were shooting this movie, Carrot Top thought he was maybe being a little broad. He that, was being wait, Larry broad. Miller was no Larry Carrot Top was thinking he was he himself oh. was a little broad. <laughs> okay. So Larry Miller took Carrot Top off to the side and said. Kid, you might try a little subtlety. Okay. And so evidently the second half of this movie is Carrot Top being uh, a little subtle? more subtle with okay. his acting choices. So not screaming. Not screaming. I didn't see it. I didn't no, see it. No, I saw no discernible difference at all. But Larry Miller has a way of being big without being annoying. He's never annoying in yes, this. I mean, the best thing is the scene where he's smashing his cell phone and screaming, and then he goes, I'll call you later. <laughs> it's, it's funny, though. But I, <laughs> and this it's, is, he's got great comedic choices. Oh, yes. yeah. This, this is his character that he does so well. It's like this slimy, evil guy. But... He did it in that Nutty Professor. I mean, he played a very similar character on Seinfeld. I was yeah. going to say Seinfeld. Yeah, yes. even in, yeah. I think he was in 10 Things I Hate About You as the dad, and he's a little more heartfelt in that, but he's it's the same, like, it's just like character. yeah, very rapid fire, witty, sarcastic. Like he kind of does this you know? character so so well. He's extra slimy in this. He's the nephew of um, uh, Jack, Jack Warden. Warden, and he like we were introduced to him like sniffing Courtney Thorne Smith's hair and like grabbing her, <laughs> oh, and yeah, refusing he to let go. <laughs> so like again, like he's kind of going for it with this character. I was going to say that when I saw that scene, I was confused. I didn't understand why he was sniffing her hair. And then I said, maybe I should rewind that. And I, I chose <laughs> not to. I would need to get through <laughs> this movie right. as fast as possible. Yeah, at this point. That's the right, the right move. <laughs> I think he's Jack Warden's nephew. Kirk yeah. yes. Smith just works at the company. Yeah. Think she's hot, whatever. Uh, smelling her hair. Raquel Welch is in this movie. Uh, she owns. Rest in peace. She died oh, in no. February. Oh, this shit. February? Yep. Oh, 2020. My God. Another Seinfeld actor. And she uh, is a like a competing like company owner that wants to buy this company. Yeah. This is where the movie turns from Pee Wee's Big Adventure to Tommy Boy very yes. quickly. Yes. Yes. And all of a sudden, I realize. Oh, I'm now watching Tommy Boy. Except she's the Bo Derek character, yeah. and she's okay. in cahoots with the other guy trying to get possession of the company. And Carrot Top is the smartass kid who knows nothing, exactly. who has inherited the company. I was like, this is the exact same yeah. movie. It's Tommy Boy, except uh, Tommy Boy's good. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like everything that. Uh, uh, Chris Farley brought to that, like just like the hearts and everything. Like, you like Chris Farley in that movie. Mm-hmm. You fucking despise Carrot Top in this movie. <laughs> he's just so annoying. Especially in this scene where he's like taking the ashes out of the urn, replacing them with an ashtray. <laughs> with a cigarette tray. The, uh, you know, the, the flame, the internal flame. He goes out and he goes, oh, it's fine. I'll put it out with flowers and then everything, you know. The, and then and he the, feels like underdressed and he's trying to steal like a necktie off of a corpse. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was trying to wrap my head around why he was choking the corpse. corpse. I got it the second time, the second watch. Uh, it wasn't he, the least funny thing He kind of goes in and he's like, oh, I feel underdressed. And then uh, it just finds a coffin and just starts like, starts he's like and then another the priest yeah. another priest is like says, well some people have different ways yeah. of grieving he says I was in the Boy Scouts and I never saw a knot like this uh, and, and Ron Howard's dad in it, is in it <laughs> I mm. couldn't believe what a terrible actor he was <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh he's he was right. the worst I mean there's a reason why he's not super famous I guess although like are, there, are, they, are they famous for acting uh, not really the Howards yeah I mean Clint uh, but I mean uh, I guess Ron Howard's the most famous actor, but he's more famous as a director. So Clint Howard, come Clint on, he's, Howard, he's an yeah. ice cream man. Yeah. 
He's in all of <laughs> a movie Ron we Howard's haven't movies. even seen. I think Rance Howard was a big uh, actor back in the day. I think he was probably on a Bonanza or two. Clint, uh, Wasn't Clinton Clint Howard was BJ in, in the Bear? In, uh, was in one of the most recent episodes of Strange New World, the new Star Trek oh. spin-off. Oh, was he a Ferengi? <laughs> No, I thought you were going to say, was he the, the little kid from the oh, original? Yes. <laughs> Would you like some Tranya? <laughs> but yeah, the scene where they're reading the video, Will, was ripped off a few years later in Basketball, almost exactly, um, with uh, Ernest Borgnine, where uh, Trey Parker, uh, he receives the base ball team you know, in a and video. In will. a video, Will, is. I mean, it's been done in other things too, I'm sure. So yeah, uh, Carrot Top, I guess, yeah. So this will, whatever he leaves Carrot Top, the entire company, his like new friend that he just met. I love the the part where he's saying to Larry Miller, like, oh, he got a surfboard and oh, I got a job. And he goes, hey man, you want to trade? It, he said it so very sweetly and Larry Miller was like, okay. <laughs> but of course he can't. Um, Cause Rance Howard's like, or no, no, it's not Rance Howard. It's some other guy who's like the executor of the will or something is like, uh, oh, oh no, yeah. it says here that you have to, you know, run the company for a certain amount of time. So right. whatever. And yeah. They- and this is where they kind of throw in the red herring, which is the surfboard, which is, so Larry yeah. Miller gets the surfboard and he's like, all your answers are on the, are on the surfboard. And I'm thinking, oh, that's going to pay off later. That's like, yeah. that's foreshadowing here. Uh, and I'm thinking maybe he's engraved something on there. A secret message in it or on it, or he'll write it and maybe something will come f- out of it. Maybe it's got a <laughs> thumb drive with some Bitcoin on it or something. <laughs> something. It's got to be something. No, it not, had there's not, no payoff. Not, or maybe it was they just decided to. It could have been cut. I mean, later he does like demolish it, and he's like, "I thought he said the answers would be in here, but there was nothing." And he and just he throws it out. A, he gives him a small box of chipped up wood. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that what comes it was. comes to nothing. Okay, um, so yeah, now we get his first day at work. He shows up in his stupid car. Larry Miller shows up. It's a running gag with Larry Miller in this like new Jaguar that keeps getting destroyed. Yeah, and I mean, uh, this part of the movie there's not a lot happening. Like, there's like a strike ugh. happening with the workers. He, like and... farts in an elevator as he's mm. going. That was up. so mm-hmm. uncomfortable. It made and no then sense. you know the sticky note scene where he's covered yeah. in post its. Yeah, oh, I then, just wanted to fucking smack him. But then we're introduced to the board, the executive board. <laughs> Enter M.M.M. Walsh. Who's who's giving it all he's got? We need that magic. Carrot top. And the other old man <laughs> character uh, who was in Home Alone, the yeah. mustache guy, and he was also in Seinfeld. He looks like yes, a yes, human yes. version of one of the Muppets. Oh, the ones the up in the two old men, the two old men that does. just like heckle. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Waldorf like, and Statler. I, I think so, something yeah. like that. But M. Emmett Walsh is in oh. this, which he deserves better. <laughs> yeah. It's weird Doesn't that they, he realize he the died, score, pal? He died recently. <laughs> He's too. little people. Here on top is little people. Yeah. We need I, you. I mean, uh, the board, which is all old men, they just love Carrot Top. They think he's great for whatever reason. Yeah. So, Larry, so it's like the, the sort of catch in uh, it's revealed that if the stock shares go below $20 a share, then Carrot Top loses. I see. Loses and everything. And then Larry Miller gets it. So, Larry Miller is trying on to like. selling it. Yeah. So, he wants to like drive the stock down. He's so. trying to tank him, and it doesn't work. Uh, you know, he's trying to get him involved in this labor dispute. And what Carrot Top does, as aforementioned, Luau Wednesdays. And they love it. And also he gives all the uh, he gives all the workers he gives all the workers a stake in the company. So he doesn't give yeah. them a raise, which is actually a pretty good idea. Can he just do that? I don't know. It's I guess. Just, everyone's yeah. high fiving in the parking lot. Yeah, including the board members, right? Yeah, which yeah. makes no they sense. Think, they, they think, think that's it's a great, great idea. Aren't they already shareholders? Yeah. They're in the board. So he's taking he's their taking, shares away yeah. Yeah. and giving it... It's an inaccurate uh, representation of old men on boards. <laughs> uh, old, uh, executives. I mean, the writer's strike is a big example of this right now. Okay. You know, They Fair don't want to give away anything to uh, the workers. Well, here, uh, during this factory tour uh, on his first day at work, we meet the R&D department head... Uh, it's Glenn Shattuck. Glenn Shattuck. From I was like, that's, Beetlejuice? Yep. Yeah. I yes. was like, I think that's Otho from, from Beetlejuice. Also on Seinfeld. And it was. So it's like the, you know, the, uh, the R&D department's all defunct, and he's like, well, I'm going to take some money. And, What's and, weird about him?
him is like he's he has he has the same awful ideas for inventions as Caraton. Yes, they so all they, have terrible ideas. They really bond, you know. <laughs> and I don't understand how this company is like still around. Well, what's his name? Larry. Larry does yes. the the guy from Beetlejuice. He does involve. Or he does invent the. Uh, the 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 male breast so you can feed a baby that exists. What? Yeah, you can buy. But it's I'm literally not gonna... it's literally just a shirt with bottles in it. Yeah, you can. I think you can probably get it on Amazon. So you don't own one, is what you're saying? I don't own one. Okay, but you're going to. I rent it. <laughs> 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 well, that well, I guess is the, they got the idea from this movie. I guess. <clears throat> oh God. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. So I just like, want to say there's a, right around this part. There is a scene where Carrot Top keeps on uh, kind of damaging Larry Miller's car. Right. Yeah. There's a scene where he shows up and he's got his two surfer buddies with him and. They op- whip open the door in the parking lot to Carrot Top's car, and they ding Larry Miller's Jaguar. Jaguar. And then it goes into this whole scene where Carrot Top decides he's going to fix it himself. <laughs> yes. And he gets out. He's like, he's <laughs> going to paint it. And he's got all different guys. Oh, wrong kind of paint. I'm going to paint it this kind. And and they spend quite a bit of time repairing this car, mm-hmm. and then of course Larry Miller comes out and sees that his car is all looking like a crazy, you know, spray painted car with all kinds it's of like things a, on it. It's all like graffiti and like pom poms. And then I realized that they spent just as just <laughs> they spent the same amount of time showing Carrot Top re- fix this guy's car than they did. Of him becoming friends with the old guy who owned the company. Yes, because <laughs> that's what's, yeah. and him that's what's dying. More important. It actually was longer than the plot point of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's, Which it's brings antics. Me back to the pacing part. It's, you need to find oh, your moments it's and so make those true. count. Yeah, also, like, when he goes on the date with Courtney Thorne Smith in the Natural History Museum, like, I know mm. she's barely in the movie, but, like, that mm. seems like the one scene that, like, slows things down. And I'm like, I don't care about this romance with this woman who clearly doesn't even like you. <laughs> yeah. And Wearing a native headdress. Yeah, yeah. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. But then they go to, there's, like, a whole tennis scene with him and Larry Miller. I kind of liked the tennis scene. It's so long. But, yeah, yeah it, is, Again, it is long. It, it is long. And it adds nothing. To yeah, anything, and it does this weird like sidestep where he's just romancing this lady, which has no consequence to anything. The only <laughs> consequence is, oh, he forgot about Larry Miller, and then he got hit in the head, and then gets the gets the sunburn, the, the sunburn racket face. But like that's just a gag. That's not Why? plot related. So answer me this: so he gets hit in the nuts with a <laughs> tennis ball from a tennis ball machine. As you do, he doubles over. He gets. Hit in the head yeah. with the tennis, and then the tennis racket falls on his face, and then it shows him, and he's got a giant smile on yeah. his face. Why does it? Why is he smiling? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I, he, I, he likes it. No, I thought that it was because when you got hit on the head, like it just like like knocked him out, uh, like you know, like in oh, a cartoon. Is that a dazed, cartoony? yeah, not the ball thing. Um, okay. Because yeah, if you okay. got, uh, you guys uh, can tell me if you get hit in the nuts, you're probably not smiling about it, right? Yeah, you pass out smiling with a tennis racket That's, falls in yeah. your head. And it was Carrot Top who put that tennis racket on his yeah, head. Yeah, he's like, he's oh, like, I'll wait, just... I'll be right back. And then you forgot. Like, oh, and then why is this tennis lady really like, oh, scene. let me teach you tennis? Like, what did you see in this man? Is it because he's rich? Maybe. I don't, okay. I don't was that the other scene? This is another one. <laughs> 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 so yes, it turns out that that woman is she's like one of like the first internet sensations she was what? like she was yeah i don't know what her name is i, I looked thought, up her name and i it sounded familiar but i didn't know where she but was she's from. like a good looking kind of internet personality oh. at the time in i thought she was just like a playboy and, bunny or something and carrot top most likely wrote her into the movie so he could be oh, a real boy. ladies man with her okay that explains why this creepy. scene goes on for like 20 minutes yeah, yeah of I, her being like yeah you gotta hold the tennis racket long and hard and you yeah. know 
know, all these yeah. like innuendos that are from a 1990s movie. And, and I think this scene only exists so he can flash back to it later because it's revealed that yes. Larry Miller has like rifled through his office and read his oh yes read his, his book idea of invent, book. his diary of invention. Yeah, so there is a plot idea. I do like when he does flash back to it and then he thinks about the girl and then Larry Miller is like, "Hey, I have presidents in this flashback. Come back to me." <laughs> and the funhouse mirror filter is like yes. going insane. I'm like, I'm going to be sick looking at this. Talk about lens distortion. Oh, By but the it way, was funny. An interesting thing about the girl who plays the tennis instructor, who turns out was famous at the time, I guess, to an extent, back it up to the museum and the security guard with the chia hair. Yeah. Chia hair. Do you know who that was? No. That was Butterbean. The professional no. boxer. <laughs> no! <laughs> I looked it up What, today. from Jackass? Yeah, it's from Jackass. Get the guy out who, of town. who knocks, what's his... Uh, Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville gets, gives him stitches. Oh my God. That was God. Butterbean. Okay. Yeah, I, I only saw it just like uh, a couple hours ago and I was leaping through <laughs> IMDb <laughs> and I looked it up and it was like, what? Butterbean? Security guard? Yeah. Oh my God, that's insane. <laughs> wow. A, a completely random cameo. That's wow, that's amazing. Was yeah. he famous like after this movie or was he put nope, in because of, of okay? He was famous yeah. before this movie. I remember I remember him from like the like 1990. He was already like quite big. I only uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. I only knew from Jackass when he like uh, beats up Johnny Knoxville and then yeah. <laughs> knocks him unconscious. Oh my god, he looked like King Kong Bundy. I don't know who any of these people are, but oh that's okay. Um, back to Caritas. Yeah, they so. have this, yeah. They have this cute date in the museum, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so Caritop, uh, they kiss, and then Caritop gets shocked, and he's like, "Oh, this is my I great have idea. An idea. I've got a great Which idea." Which is, by the way, the stupidest idea ever, and makes no sense. Yeah. So okay. So him kissing her by the thing that makes your hair stand up. He mm-hmm. got an electric shock. Yeah. And so that's what gave him the idea for. His killer idea of like no, not an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, an he iPhone. He has created a TV dinner that is both a TV dinner and a TV in one. Yes, and apparently it'll only cost three extra dollars to make it as opposed to a regular TV dinner or something like that. Yes, yes. So I was questioning. So after you eat the TV dinner, do you, <laughs> do throw, you throw it, throw in it? The I said I said the same thing. <laughs> yes. To which I realized after watching it for a little bit, oh yeah, you do yeah. because they have Bill Clinton <laughs> yeah. in the White House. It's terrible. Bill and he's like, hey, bring me one, bring goes, more of those TV yeah. dinners. No, he goes, <laughs> and they're carting away a ton and to throw them out. She says, "Bill, come to bed." He's like, "Oh, just as soon as this Dukes of Hazard episode ends." It doesn't make any sense. Everyone and is maybe going it's crazy. not supposed to. People in prison are eating them. They're not allowed to just have di- uh, whatever. <laughs> like, They're not what, allowed what, to watch TV in what prison. What powers cells. it? What like yeah. is all so this like cr- electronic waste is going into like some so he's, landfill? He's created an iPad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with some French fries on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what he's <laughs> and the and French he fries just... is as equally as important as the iPad part of it. Also, <laughs> people have TVs. Why do they need another TV in their in their dinner? Um, in their TV dinner. Yeah. Maybe if you're so, eating it at work, I don't I guess. know. <laughs> Who know? I, it was I can't before think of... everyone had like a computer and where they could watch YouTube videos. You don't have to watch TV while you're eating, I guess. Is what, well, I mean, know. he's saying yes, you do. And the stock, he's on a surfboard on a graphic that's going up and up and up. And there's a big montage of him just on the cover of Forbes and Time <laughs> and probably Maxim and everything. And it's just like a huge montage. And Larry Miller's like, ah, um, drinking Pepto-Bismol. And this goes on for like 10 minutes. It, it goes on forever. Where Every he's scene like, goes on He's got on a forever. solid gold surfboard. Oh, like, my, oh, he's got a surfboard with like a, a, like what is it? Like a phone built into it. Yeah. And he's like, hello, chairman of the board. Oh, on a board. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, for God's but this, sake. So this is the point where I was like, is this movie like over? Like, this is it. This is the movie. You would think so. No, there's the whole like, 
intrigue that feels very tacked on at the end. He seems, he's like turning, this thing is like a runaway success, uh, and he, he starts becoming like an asshole. He's like, mm-hmm. well, he's up. like a little bit. And then that's when the movie turns into the Hudsucker proxy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where he's got it all. And he's getting big headed about it, yeah. which leads the viewer to think, oh, it's all going to come down now. And it does. Poor Caratop. Not he really. He doesn't deserve this. Well, he cut. does deserve it. Well, he sniffs <laughs> his friends for rent, was it? Yeah. yeah. Is that the big thing? He gives him a check. The check bounces. The check bounces. But then he's like in the limo and he's calling like pizza delivery service and he's complaining that. You know, it's over 30 minutes, and then the guy is like, he's like, it's a white limo. Like, how come you can't find it? And he's making the guy chase after him. And Karen yeah. Smith is like, she's back in the movie now, and she's uh-huh. like, hey, you're being... What, you're stop t- being a jerk? Yeah. yeah, she's like, all the success is going to your head. Money uh, will change you, people, so you and don't want to be that... Po- uh, so there's that like a big scandal. Successful. It's like this guy goes on TV, I that guess. That was kind of funny, where he's like, look at me! He turns the lights off, and he's just, like, glowing, <laughs> like he was at a rave. <laughs> yeah, he complains that, like, the radiation or something from the TV and the TV dinner is, like... I got to say, it's right around this part where I had to write this down because I could not make heads or tails out of this. But all the guys in the boardroom, the, the chairmans of the boards, yes. yeah. are, are, they're all fighting. And the two old men are fighting. And the one old man grabs the other guy and he says, and I wrote it down, don't jerk me off and meet me at the moon. <laughs> yeah, I think it was maybe M. Emmett who said that, or, or yeah. the other guy. Yeah. So I, I had to, I had to go back. <laughs> I watched it again. I still didn't understand. So I watched it again with closed captioning on. And I'm gonna say it again. Don't jerk me off and meet me at the moon. Don't jerk me off and meet me at the moon. I, what I, does that, that mean? That doesn't I make any know. sense. Because there's another one coming up. Yes. <laughs> that he says to Raquel Welch. <laughs> yes, oh, the Raquel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that one's coming up, but hey, this is the one that made me think. Don't you jerk me off and meet, meet me at the moon. <laughs> meet me at the moon. Uh, like, don't jerk me off is like, don't jerk me around, I guess. You know? And meet uh, me uh, at <laughs> The moon, not on the moon, at the moon. <laughs> at the moon, <laughs> at the moon. Is, a, is is there a, like a gay bar called the moon, maybe or something like maybe that? Maybe talking about his butt, you know. The moon. <laughs> oh Regardless, I think that's its own separate podcast. Yeah, just M- dissecting that phrase. M. Emmett Walsh's "Meet Me at the Moon." Yeah, so we have this radiation scandal. It's like the company is like losing. You know, the stock is like plummeting. Mm-hmm. Larry Miller is like rubbing his hands so he, he, he kind of takes in, over it goes b- below like twenty dollars he kind of dismantles yes. everything uh i mean we didn't mention something that's going to become a big thing which is the bull shirt oh, God. bull shirt oh the bull shirt jesus yes. christ which is basically a lie detector that one voluntarily wears yeah built which into a shirt and built when you in. lie it just starts farting it plays it says, fart noises it makes <laughs> fart noises and says bull on your breast pocket and i completely missed what they said i was doing something something else i came back and then april you were like what the hell is with this shirt and then i'm like oh my god it's a don't bull. make it's me a, rewind it's a bull this. shirt i didn't i didn't get the pun there's a lot of puns in this oh it's terrible uh so yeah so he's he's like in front of the board he like spills something on his shirt has to change into the bull shirt and he's like accidentally yeah. changes into the bull without yeah. his knowledge he of changes course. into the bull shirt and uh, starts lying in front of the board, blah, 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 blah. So they he orchestrated this whole thing. Caratop and his friends realize that, like, the guy is glowing from his whatever. He has, like, a like a revelation about glow gunk. How does that happen? Glow- uh, oh, because he realizes that when he was playing tennis... Flashback. That oh. his book of yeah. inventions, one of his inventions was glow gunk. And he realizes that... Larry Miller has stolen his glow gunk to make the guy glow and made the guy glow. Yeah, that's interesting. And also, okay, so Raquel Welsh is around and she wants to sell the company. So she's like, no, she wants to buy. My, she wants to buy company. the company and then sell the company. So here's my contract. And then Larry Miller doesn't have a pen. Yeah, Isn't that funny? I search for a pen. Yeah, it is. I, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. But we yeah, can't. We like really need back a to pen. Toronto at the airport <laughs> years ago before it was digital. 
No one has a pen. Do you remember that when they used to give out those stupid custom cards on the plane when you're coming back to Toronto? They still do, don't they? Yeah, but you can do it digitally as well. Oh, yeah. They have the machines. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to pack yeah. a pen. Oh, well, they give announcements now. They say, if you have a pen, please share with the person sitting <laughs> next to you. Yeah, so but I can't stupid. remember the last time I... I done that it's all like kind of on the app now i just had it come back oh my I god i flew porter uh, yeah and they did the pen and they thing? did it yeah. oh wow i did it on a rive can and it was just like do 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 and then yeah we, we got like advanced to the front of the line they're like you've no, done it's how you? you make friends oh it's the you worst ask for, your, ask for the person's pen they give you a pen next thing you know yeah and you're stuck in that buddies. room and all, all the official pens had been pulled off the thing and mm. so nobody had pens to fill out these things before digital. And then you'd have to like beg for pens. And even like the employees were like, we don't have pens. You would think in chairman of the board that Carrot Top would have had a pen. He's <laughs> got everything. Of fan- yeah, he's, he's some like, kind of fancy pen that's like a pun <laughs> of some off, kind. You shove yeah. a pen up your ass. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, he shows up. <laughs> are we going there? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's the line? <laughs> so... So someone says to Raquel Welsh. No, it's M. M. Emmett Walsh that says Oh, M. Emmett yeah, Walsh yeah. <laughs> says, I'd like to take the high road. Oh, someone says, yeah, oh, take goes, the high road. And, he, and, and they say, I'd like to take the high road to your ass with my shoe. <laughs> which is a whippersnapper of an insult. <laughs> followed by an equally as confusing response for, from Raquel Welsh, which was, ooh, I might enjoy that. <laughs> Okay, so she likes being so kicked she, in the ass with a shoe. Likes pe- she likes shoes up her ass. <laughs> with Emma and Walt. Hey. It's not hey. even like a sexual thing. Hey He's there, just Rockham. saying, like, I want to kick you. And yeah, she's she, like, oh. She's like, oh, oh she she plays like a very me. randy character. Yeah, she's like she's like squeezing uh, Larry Miller's like ass during this whole scene, by the way. It's really funny. They have like mm. a, a behind. She whatever. had this kind of like thing like, you know, maybe I'll sleep with you if we you sell me this company. So they have the big, like, um, you know, Sherlock Holmes detective scene. Like, you were lying the whole time. Yes, yeah, here we go. Let's the, walk through it. The bull shirt, the bull is, shirt like is going off. He like says, crazy. you use glow gunk. And then he turns the lights off and his friends. In, and everyone is just convinced of that this is the case because... Larry Miller's, uh, you know, shirt is going off. Right. <laughs> so they, revealing that he is lying and everyone buys this. So he flees, uh, tries to steal Carrot Top's car. And this is set up at the very beginning, the very intro when he meets Jack Warden. Yes. Uh, Jack Warden's like, well, your car is full of gizmos. And he's like, uh, yeah, you should see the alarm system. It's a real kicker. And oh. I was like, you don't actually get to see it until the end of the movie. This is like Chekhov's nut shot. So is this your they, favorite thing about the movie? <laughs> they set it up. I'm going to say Larry Miller is my favorite thing. <laughs> you all have to say your favorite thing. But yeah, anyway, well, whatever. talk about the nut shot. <laughs> yeah, he gets into his car, removes the uh, the club, I think it is, which is something like if you lived in L.A. in the, yes. in the 90s, everybody had the club mm. to like it locks your steering wheel like or something like that. A shoehorn that, that kind of, yeah, you... You snap it onto your steering wheel so that no one can steer it, even if they did yeah, steer it. Yeah, it sort of like hits your, your door. It's like a boot, but for the steering wheel. Yeah, but Carrot Top's car has one of those like uh, dune buggy gas pedals that are like metal feet. It's like a okay. foot. Yeah, and it just slams of course, up into Because it's nuts. wacky. And I mean, mm-hmm. one more nut shot for the end of the I movie, mean, why right? Not, right? Yeah, we all love it. And then they're all watching from like the, the office, and they're like, ooh. Yeah. And is that the end of the movie? <laughs> You'd think so. I honestly don't remember. Is there more? I think there's more. I wrote, well, yeah, they have to go back to the beach. Oh, no. Oh, they do go back to the <laughs> so, beach. So, okay, before, okay, so as all the, the big <laughs> denouement that's happening here, of course, you know, they're seeing uh, Larry Miller get his just desserts. Uh, Carrot Top gets the, gets the business back. Uh, and they're setting it all up for Carrot Top and Natalie have their big kiss. At, yeah, in front of it, everybody. In front of everybody. And I thought to myself, is it wrong that I have a diamond heart erection at this point? <laughs> Well, I think all the go- all the old men in the room did. They're like they're oh like God. cheering them on. Oh no, they're they're just like living vicariously through them. They can't. There's no action down there. 
They all have the yeah, hots wife, for Courtney like, Thorne Smith. Well, she was on Melrose Place. Why don't you slip her some time? Or was this her <laughs> Ali McBeal days? Maybe was, would, would that come out later? Oh, yeah. I don't. I think who was on Ali McBeal? Courtney Thorne Smith. Where's she? I, I only know because I watched the first two episodes on Disney Plus, and she's in it. So I don't know if she like is in the whole show. I but want to say that was after this. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But I don't know when that show started. I think it was like 99, 2000. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I think, so I think on that yeah. Norm... She had that, or sorry, she that had Conan that motion clip. capture CGI dancing baby in Alec McBeal. That's right. Yeah, and that yeah. was a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a little until... later. Yeah, there was a big gap and like Alec McBeal was like her kind of not come back, but... I think you're right because on that Conan thing, she's like, oh yeah, I did this on Melrose Place. I did yeah, this and yeah, I had yeah, to yeah. leave Norm and now said, I'm promoting this movie. Norm says, wait... You quit Melrose Place <laughs> yeah. to be in a Carrot Top movie? <laughs> so even back then, Carrot Top was a total punchline. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. Which is, which is I great. remember. <laughs> which is great. I remember Box very vividly. Box poison. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that wasn't the complete end because, you know, every movie needs a button and oh, the, the perfect oh, no. time to go back to the beach and bring back Estelle Harris. Right. Yes. It's a Because it's a Harris. surfing movie. By yes. the way, we didn't mention she talks with a voice box in this movie, which that's supposed to be funny. Because she smokes so. a lot. She's, I mean, she's like she does a... like shotgun a cigarette, yeah. which was pretty yeah. funny. And, it, and if you watch closely, yeah, she does smoke an entire long cigarette <laughs> in one huff. And then when they when they cut and you, they show her from another angle, it's all the way long again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's my carrot top blooper. Oh but anyways, God. they bring back Estelle Harris and uh, carrot talk wipes out on a surfboard right. and needs mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Who's it going to be? Estelle Harris. Because old women are disgusting. That's gross. Why is she on the beach in the first place like with them? Like, I don't know. Is she know. celebrating? She hates these people. She just happens to be there. I guess. But like, yeah, because I mean, the, this is the joke they chose to go out on. Yeah. That you know? was their, like I said. Not even a prop related. You start with your silver <laughs> yeah. and end yeah. with your gold. Was this like the fifth request that Carrot Top like wrote into? I want to make yeah, with the Stell Harris. Harris. Yeah, with the Stel Stel Harris. Harris wrote that. Uh, one. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, just an uh, insult to her and everyone, um, and old people everywhere. So we all need to say what our favorite things were, and I think we hey, did, I did, except for I said, except I said for Larry Paul. Miller. Like you have to Paul. pick something. Oh, that's the man. that's the contingency of this podcast. Uh, it's probably gonna be the rock and soundtrack. I mean, I I, mean, got, I think that there are a lot of funny performances in this movie that are not carrot top. <laughs> um, but I said the surfing scenes, so <laughs> so I'm going with that because I love a bad. Uh, it's not even green screen, like I said. It's just like cutting to them in, at a different location. They're in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. There was a couple of shots of a surfing dog for some reason. Yeah, uh, brought us random. back to the Marmaduke. Are you going through your days. notes, Paul, to try to find I am. like your favorite? I am. Thing? <laughs> you can't be a you guest unless you pick something. <laughs> I have to say that "Don't jerk me off and meet me at the moon" <laughs> was my favorite part. Yeah, so perplexing. <laughs> But it's what that is. If it's M- Emmett Walsh, which I it probably don't, is, if he did the other. Don't jerk me off and meet me at the moon. That's going to be. That should have been the tagline for the movie. Yes. Instead, it was catch the wave. Yeah. I saw that today. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That doesn't even. <laughs> Doesn't tell me anything about the movie. By the way, I'm also just making another connection right now of M. Emmett Walsh. Is that the, this movie also follows very closely Rags to Riches plotline of Steve Martin movie The Jerk? Oh, sure. Yeah. The invention that has gone wrong, supposedly. The, uh, the glasses. The glasses. Yeah, yeah. And then he loses everything after kind of getting big headed about it. M. Emmett Walsh is also in The Jerk. Oh, he's the he's guy just who in tries everything. To kill the sharpshooter. I think oh he's my God. Uh, oh yeah, this guy hates these cans. <laughs> Much better movie. I think his last role uh, might have been uh, Knives Out. And Emmett Walsh was in Knives yes, Out. Yeah, he was like the groundskeeper or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I you said Knives Out, and I was thinking Glass Onion for whatever reason. Yeah, but and I, I was like, he wasn't. I hadn't in that. seen him in yeah. so long, and then when he showed up in that movie, it was like, holy shit! I couldn't he's a you. treasure. I know. 
By the way, I mean, I can't believe we got through this entire thing without mentioning Alex Zam, who is the director of this movie. Yes. Yeah, he has quite a storied career uh, in sequels, mostly. He has directed Inspector Gadget 2, (laughs) Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2, Under Wraps 2, Tooth Fairy 2, and Jingle All the Way 2. The last two movies start start Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. So you can oh. probably tell that Alex Zam only attracts the top tier of talent in the movie industry. And of comedians. Like, he's a big comedian and most guy. Most of them were the like best. direct-to-video kind of yes. sequels. Yeah. He never directed part one of any of those movies. Yeah. <laughs> just the take... Just, just the part two. He probably got like typecast as the director of he of finishes. Sequels. He finishes the series, so it's like J.J. Yeah. Abrams will do the initial, like he'll do the first movie. Yeah. Uh, start, you know, because he has no plan on how to finish stories, and then yeah. Alexander Zam will come in and he, finish it off. He also wrote, and before this, he also wrote and directed a short called "My First Haircut." Okay. Uh, and I tried <laughs> to look it up on YouTube, and I couldn't find it. But I found it on Vimeo. <laughs> what? And is it his own channel? Or? It is exactly chairman of the board. Lots of wide angles, in your face shots. Oh, God. Little kid humor, is it? Because it stars a little kid, but it's also got some older stuff. It's like torturing a small child. And it is eight minutes and 53 seconds long, which is about eight minutes too long. Oh, God. That must be why he got chairman of the board. Yeah, was that one of his first movies? I think. I think it was his very first movie. Yeah, it um, may have been. Yeah, I think it was the first one he directed. Now I haven't seen those other movies, but I'm guessing this is at least a little more creative than probably like Tooth Fairy Two, you know. Maybe. But I haven't seen those, so I'm not going to judge. With Larry the Cable Guy? Are you kidding? Yeah. I think I'd rather watch. I hate, three, two I hate this. Larry the Cable Guy. I think I would um, rather watch that than this. I th- I don't know, um, but anyway, you know what? This movie, it is what it is, and it's not as bad as some other things that we have covered. What the like hell? Are you because there about? are good things in it. You just need to like, whenever like Carrot Top is on screen, just like think of something else. Like go somewhere else in your brain. I I also got to say, I give it four stars. <laughs> oh, out, of, out of what? Out, out of one million. <laughs> You said you texted me on the like weekend or whatever. You're like, it's better than Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, like, better than Star Wars. Which Star Wars? Uh, anyway, if you want to watch uh, the Carrot Top movie, Chairman of the Board. It's on Tubi. Where it's everything... on Tubi for free. Oh, you could have watched it on Tubi for free. But with, com- with commercials. Tubi. It's, it's free. free. It's just an app. I don't, buy, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust it. Or apparently you rented it off iTunes. I, I feel like I need to give Carrot Top some money. I can't just get really? it for free. He's got millions. Also, he's jacked. He's got he's millions. <laughs> this movie, by and the way, and a lot of plastic surgery. Uh, worldwide gross was three hundred thousand dollars. That's on terrible. A, on a, like a like seven, seven million, million dollar, dollar budget. budget. Also, if Justin was here, I, he would probably say that there's apparently a really funny Carrot Top commentary on the DVD. Uh, he mentioned that we'll on Letterboxd. He did? Somewhere, on Letterboxd somewhere. So, um, That's the kind of thing he would say. Yes. Yeah, if you were uh, so here. we're just speaking for <laughs> him right, right R.I.P. Now. Justin. Um, but like I said, anyway, if you want to watch this movie, it's on Tubi, or apparently it is rentable. Um, and so that's it for this week. If you want to email the podcast, we're at no such thing as a bad movie at gmail.com. And on, we're on Twitter, Blue Sky and Instagram at No Such Thing Pod. And uh, if you'd like to support the podcast, consider uh, donating to our Patreon. We're on patreon.com slash no such thing is a bad movie. And if you subscribe at the $5 level, you get a little bonus episode every two weeks. And um, we just recorded one on actually two movies, so you get a little two first. So we got The Flash and The Bear. I mean, two like completely different uh, properties. Not right Cocaine there. Bear, The Bear, no. the TV show. Uh, no, The Bear TV show. And uh, if you're on the $2 level, you get submitted to the lottery where you can pick a movie for the main episode every so often. Lots of other content on there. We've got, we just released a Q&A that is an hour and a half of me and Colin and Justin answering questions, some commentaries. So that's the Patreon. And if you want to follow me, I am on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Blue Sky at April Atmansky. 
Uh, if you're at the $20 level, you can co-host like uh, Paul Brown did today. It's kind of like, you know, think of it as like the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, <laughs> That's <something>. right. <laughs> like, you know, if your um, wish is to co-host. Uh, yes, Paul's got a horrible disease. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so you can follow me on uh, Twitter, Sergeant Zima, S-G-T-Z-I-M-A. Um, that is it. Paul, 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 you want to promote anything? Oh, wait, oh, well, wait. first of all, I want to thank you, too. This oh. is awesome. Thank you of for course. allowing me to Very do this. It's been a blast. If anyone wants to follow me, <laughs> which I highly doubt, uh, you can go to charlietupperman.com. That's my website. And if you can find what things I've directed that I'm keeping quiet about. or um, And you can also find... <laughs> those uh podcasts those podcasts that are terrible uh or you can go on instagram and i'm on charlie underscore tupperman underscore productions that's great thank you so much for coming on the pod thank it was you. a thrill this is a this yes is do a, you listen to this podcast uh, you know i do okay I listen to it quite a <laughs> do bit. you know who we are <laughs> Uh, not sure barely. okay thank you for your patron money uh <laughs> <laughs> that's not true okay yeah there uh, no is no money tier. no money no was ex- no money was exchanged um but uh yeah for all you listeners i hope you're having a very good september uh we're doing our best here to try and stay out of the hustle and bustle of tiff but the, the city is incredibly busy right now so we're just trying to get by but uh <laughs> Um, if you want more TIFF updates from Justin, check out his YouTube channel because he's actually uh, doing little mini reviews on there. And, uh, yep, thanks for joining us. I've been April Imanski. Uh I've been Colin Cunningham. I have been and will remain Paul Brown. <laughs> and remember, there's no such thing as a bad movie. Bye. Whoa.